Would you like to colonize Mars? Then we would need your blood and sweat. Literally. This is not a joke. Scientists actually offered to use human blood, sweat and urine to... Well, for colonization of Mars. And that's not the only crazy idea out there. I'm going to talk about Mars colonization more in future, but recently I found a few interesting stories, each of which won't be enough to make a whole separate video on them, so I decided to combine them in one. Three crazy but existing ideas of scientists of how to live and survive on Mars and how to get back to Earth. And they involve human blood, living organisms and uh, the satellite of Mars. And that's what we're going to talk about today. My name is Andre, and this is Cosmos Elementary. Before humans could actually stay on Mars for extended periods of time, a lot of problems need to be solved, and today's stories concern some of those problems. So what's up with the blood? Future colonists will need a place to live, and you should know that Mars is not the nicest place for humans. With its low temperatures, the atmosphere where we won't be able to breathe, and that is 95% CO2. Also, the atmosphere is really weak, only 1% of the Earth's atmospheric density, and with no dense atmosphere and without a strong global magnetic field, humans on the surface of Mars will be subjected to a lot more radiation, like UV sunlight or high-energy charged particles of solar wind, coronal mass ejections and cosmic rays. So ideally, Mars habitat not only has to provide life support and adequate temperature, air to breathe, but also protect from harmful radiation. And also from micrometeorites. Again, thin Martian atmosphere doesn't protect very well from them. In the past, there were a lot of various concepts of Mars habitats. One of the early ideas was to simply use the spacecraft astronauts arrived in as a habitat. That, of course, has a downside of limited area. If we just took to Mars parts of pre-made habitats, that would, again, be only of a limited size and also very expensive. The cost of space missions heavily depends on the mass of a payload, and in the case of going to Mars, it's even more severe. So perhaps not a bad idea is to use inflatable habitats, the mass is low and the area could be larger. With certain materials, they could be made stiff enough, but there is still an issue of radiation. Those habitats could be partially or completely hidden under the surface. And we don't even necessarily need to dig holes in the Martian surface ourselves. Mars, just like the Moon and Earth, has lava tubes. Underground lava flows create sort of caves. And they could even already have entrances just like on these photos. These lava tubes could protect humans from radiation and that was a topic of some studies. If we want to build something more substantial, we could send to Mars not pre-made parts of habitats, but rather building material. Though, that still won't be cheap. According to some estimates, it would cost roughly $2 million to send a single brick to Mars. That's why there is a different approach. To use materials that already exist on Mars, like Martian regolith. So it could be used to make a solid material similar to concrete which in turn could be used to build habitats that would provide decent protection from radiation. But regolith is not the only necessary component. There is a fine and coarse aggregate, but also we need some binding agent. In the case of concrete, it is fluid cement, which hardens the material. Without it, it will not become a solid material and you won't build anything out of it. So we've got regolith, but where do we get a binding agent from? Well, we could simply deliver it to Mars, but again, that's expensive. But what if it's already there? There were suggestions to use sulfur, which is present in Martian soil. And that's possible. We also need water, which we could get from ice deposits. But there are drawbacks to that plan. Sulfur doesn't really like fire, and that's not really safe. And also, compounds with sulfur don't have the nicest smell, which is also not great, though not impossible. And what if the materials that we could use as binding agents were there all along? Well, we're in us all along. That's what blood, sweat, tears and urine is for. That's a subject of a recent paper published in Materials Today Bio. Actually, the basic idea is not new. For instance, animal blood was used as a binding agent for mortar for hundreds of years. 
But obviously in this case it's not just that. Scientists found out that to bind Martian regolith one could use human serum albumin or HSA, which is a common protein obtained from blood plasma. It was applied on simulated Martian and lunar regolith and it created a solid concrete-like material. These are the samples and they displayed compressive strengths similar to concrete. But that's not all. Also researchers learned that adding urea, which is found in urine, tears and sweat, allows to increase compressive strengths up to 40 megapascals, which is actually stronger than regular concrete. Such a material could be used for 3D printed habitats, for instance. Scientists calculated that one person during a 72 week long mission could create enough HSA to create more living space for another person. So we would need to send first humans to Mars and some kind of base has to be there, but then using Martian regolith, well, basically harvesting binder from humans, we could expand the habitat. Colonists would have to donate blood on a regular basis, and for now it's hard to say how that would influence first Martians. Even without that, they would be subjected to physical and psychological stresses, so the whole idea needs further research. But still, that could vastly decrease spendings, and also the method is relatively simple comparing to some other ideas of binders for regolith. No bioreactors or other complex tech required. And it's already been tested on simulated regolith, and now it would be great to perform experiments on actual Martian soil. And what do you think? Would you donate blood to build habitats on Mars? Alright, let's assume we send humans to Mars and build habitats. Also, it's not the worst idea to have for colonists to be able to come back to Earth. But again, we face the same problem. It's very expensive. Hauling to Mars a bunch of fuel to be able to come back would cost billions. Perhaps you could stay? But in all seriousness, it would make the whole mission much more expensive. But what if we could make fuel on Mars instead of bringing it with us? If we consider SpaceX's Starship, it uses methane and liquid oxygen as oxidizer. I talked about bipropellant and other kinds of rockets in a recent video. There isn't much pure oxygen on Mars, and finding methane is also a problem. But there is still a way to get them via chemical reactions. We could get oxygen from CO2 in Martian atmosphere and methane, well, it's a bit more complicated, but there are options. For instance, Sabatier reaction, using CO2 from the atmosphere and water from ice deposits, it's possible to make methane and oxygen. And that's not the only option. Authors of the study that was published in Nature Communications offered to use microorganisms to make fuel on Mars. There is a reason why this idea is also somewhat crazy. And it's not even the fact that you would need to build large facilities on Mars. That's hard, but not impossible. Currently, if we send a spacecraft to a body that has even the tiniest chance of having life or signs of ancient life, even the microbial life, we try as hard as we can to sterilize the spacecraft and its instruments. Not to accidentally contaminate Mars or ensolid us with microorganisms from Earth. Otherwise, we could think we found alien life, which actually would be just our own microbes. And here the plan is to build huge football field sized farms with microorganisms. But let's hope that if anyone actually tries to do that, they will take care of that. But let's see what authors of the study actually suggest to do. So instead of taking fuel to Mars, we would need to take two main types of microorganisms. Cyanobacteria and genetically modified E. coli bacteria. Those who are against GMO would have to stay on Mars. So we need to build farms like this one, it consists of several elements. But here is the basic idea. Cyanobacteria, using sunlight and water from Martian ice, consuming CO2 from the atmosphere, in the process of photosynthesis, would create sugars. It also requires enzymes. The GMO microbes transform sugar into 2,3-butanediol, an organic compound that could be used as rocket fuel. This compound could replace methane. It would give less thrust, but in the weak gravity of Mars it should be enough. One more good thing is that in the process some excess oxygen is produced, which astronauts could breathe. But you might have noticed a little flaw in that plan, besides the risk of contaminating Mars. We wanted to reduce the mass of the payload, but in this case, instead of hauling fuel, we would have to take those microorganisms, enzymes and all of the necessary equipment. That is obviously not single-use, but still. 
It still could be cheaper than just taking fuel to Mars, but as I've said, there are other ways to make fuel on Mars. On the one hand, it has been calculated that using current technology for this method, the mass of necessary equipment would be three times the mass of equipment required for production of fuel via chemical reactions. On the other hand, the method with bacteria uses 32% less power and also gives 44% of excess oxygen for breathing. Authors also note that this approach could be optimized. Then the mass actually would be 13% less than the equipment for chemical methods and require 59% less energy and still give out 20 tons of extra oxygen. So that could be done, though the plan is not without its flaws. All those little things, habitats, base building, fuel, how about something bigger? If we want to stay on Mars for longer, we need to change the conditions on the planet on global scale. Create a breathable atmosphere, make Mars warmer, basically terraform the planet, which currently doesn't seem realistic. One of the main things that needs to be done to terraform Mars is creating a magnetic field. If, hypothetically, you already spend a lot of resources and time to create better climate and atmosphere, it also would be nice not to lose that atmosphere back to space and not die of radiation. Magnetic field would help. Now there are only small magnetized regions on Mars, which perhaps remained after the global magnetic field was gone. Also, Mars has a weak magnetic field induced perhaps by charged particles from the Sun interacting with currents on Mars. Anyway, it doesn't really protect from anything, and we know that Mars has already lost most of its atmosphere, and a lot of charged particles reach the surface, and that is a threat for humans. There are several ideas of varying degree of crazy of how to bring back magnetic protection. Probably the most extreme one is to do it, well, the way it works here on Earth. Scientists believe that it is created via a magnetic dynamo mechanism in the motion of material in the Earth's liquid and solid layers of the core. But on Mars that mechanism doesn't work, but theoretically it could be started again. Recent data from the InSight mission suggests that Martian core could be liquid. We could start the dynamo by hitting the core with nuclear explosions. But the problems of actually getting nukes to the core and detonating them all at the same time aside, it's enough to just look at how much energy is required. It could be equivalent of 100 billion one megaton hydrogen bombs. Again, not the best idea. But artificial magnetic field could be created externally with some sort of devices. For instance, a solid magnetic ring around Mars. Or a ring of detached stations in orbit that generate magnetic field. In Expanse, for instance, they had solenoids that created the magnetic field in the orbit of Mars. They also could be placed on the surface. Another interesting idea is to put a device generating the magnetic field in the L1 point of the Sun-Mars system. The device would create a magnetic tail which could protect Martian atmosphere. But there is one more idea, and here is a paper about it. Authors suggest creating plasma torus around Mars, a ring of charged particles with electric currents that would generate a magnetic field. Io, the moon of Jupiter, exhibits something similar naturally. A volcanically active body expels material into space and that creates a plasma torus. But there are a lot of differences as well, and obviously it's all happening inside the strong magnetic field of Jupiter itself. So the idea is to create such a torus with the help of moons of Mars. Let's say Phobos. Special equipment on the surface of the moon would ionize the material and accelerate the ions so they could escape the moon's gravity. And the moon moving in orbit would create a ring around the planet. Ionized particles would create currents and hence magnetic fields. After some time, it could create a magnetic field strong enough for protection of the atmosphere and humans on the surface. Of course, this idea is far from becoming a reality, lots of problems need to be solved, but that's definitely better than the billion nukes. And also, this concept does not require huge structures in orbit. All three ideas I talked about at first sound quite extreme, but they are not impossible, at least in future. But it's hard to say whether any of those will ever be implemented, and even whether we will live to see the first human set foot on Mars. Though, I'd really love to see that. Thanks for watching, links to all of the sources are as usual down in the description, and if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe not to miss new videos, and share this video with your friends. Bye!